from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X3D, Dean W. Gannett. Well, hi there, and welcome to episode 117 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D, and I always like to begin every episode by reminding our new members that you really do need to learn X3D viewing in order for this channel to make any sense at all to you. The good news is that the average person with normal 3D vision can do X3D with no problem. Everything you need to know is linked down below in the description. I have an announcement to make our very first proud weirdo first class Kevin Mulligan. Welcome, Kevin, and thank you for your support. I wish you'd uh, get in touch with me at the uh, email address down below in the description. Send me your shipping address. I have something I'd like to pass along to you. And for the rest of you, all you have to do to get all kinds of little perks and shout outs and things like that is to click that join button down below. This will be the last episode that I do without advertising because I just simply have to pay the bills somehow around here. I literally can't afford to keep putting in 40 hours a week on this work and neglecting all my other avenues of uh, monetary advancement and creative outlet uh, just to devote to this. I would love to be able to do this full time but uh, until I start getting a little bit of support, well, this will be the last ad-free episode. So sorry about that, but you know what to do. Anyway, we have a lot of cool things to look at this week. So let's go ahead and dive right in. In this context view from Neville Thompson's GMAC of 3308, we have something there in the green target that needs a closer look. Now, to many of you, this will appear kind of random at first glance, but let's take a closer look. On the right end, we can see where it's round. It's, see, it's like a cylinder. In fact, it is a cylinder, and there seem to be rods all around the perimeter of the end. Now, whether that's to plug it into something, if this is electronic or mechanical, or if this is some kind of carving that needed to be mounted in a base that would receive that uh, kind of bayonet locking, well, I don't know, but it could be. Then you have this V-shaped formation right in front. And notice how it's the, both sides are the same length, the same thickness, it's a nice clean angle, and it's pointing right into, I don't know, it looks like sphagnum moss. I, what is it? Is it an organic that's been fossilized? If it's erosion, it's really, really unusual. And of course, many of you will have already noticed what appear to be two gear-like wheels on the left end. So, is this a, a machine? Is it uh, a carving? Who knows what it is, but it really has some mechanical aspects to it, wouldn't you agree? This next one is one of Nev's ChemCam GMAX. I love these things. They look like they're drawn with a pencil almost, but there it is up in the left-hand corner, and it's actually pretty big. I found this one interesting. I mean, look at the non-fractal angles. You've got triangles, you've got more than a few right angle, 90 degree uh, angles, and you've got arcs, you've got radial lines, you've got that nice thin lip in back. This is interesting. I think this might be mechanical. I really like these arcs that kind of mirror each other. And look how perfect they are. They both match each other. It's almost like this was a clamshell that had been opened up and these were meant to nest inside of each other. And did you notice this symmetrical 
piece that's uh, that's square. It's got 90 degree corners. It's rounded in front and it appears to have rivets on it. Let me take the shading off of it so you can see it again in its natural state. With all the non-fractal angles and the various symmetries throughout this piece, I think it's safe to say that this is not natural. You know, Neil Spence is consistently turning out really beautiful work with his G-Max, and what's unusual is that he doesn't usually point out anomalies in his own work, but this time he did. So let's take a closer look at what Neil found. The main thing is that perfectly square piece coming off the left side. I've lightened things up a bit so you can see more of the details. But look at the markings covering this block. Now is the block itself uh, an anomaly? I don't know. It certainly is strange. But that square piece, that's definitely not natural. Here's one, a sharp-eyed member of our team. Raymond Glassford sent over to me just the other day from Curiosity 3365. Now, the case could be made that both of these are just really interesting erosions, but, uh, well, I'm going to let you make up your own mind about the one on the left, but I've kind of made up my mind about the one on the right. You've got that nice square piece, that cap that overlays it, and what appears to be carving on the right-hand side. I think that that might have been intelligently made. Here's another one that Neil Spence pointed out in his GMAC on Percy 246. So we have this trilobed block. For those of you from Iowa, that just means it has three pieces to it. But look how symmetrical it is. And yeah, it's blurry. I understand that. But, uh, you know, you got the two rounded pieces flanking the larger rounded piece in the center. And all three of them have nice little cups carved into the center of their faces. Once again, that's a clear sign of intelligent agency. And take a look at this uh, really messy screen door. This is uh, a process they call bayering, you know, like bayer aspirin, and it renders a screen door effect. And my understanding is that they, uh, this is a preliminary data product uh, process that breaks it down to RGB, red, green, blue, for later color. But uh, we don't have that color and probably won't for months, three, three, four, five years from now. So have a look what happens when we get rid of the screen door. <laughs> yeah, the lights really come on, don't they? This is one sent in to me just recently by a new researcher, Nurul Iman Supardi. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> and uh, you can see it up there, top center. Personally, I think this is really cool. I don't know what it is, but... Look at the shape. Let your eyes play over this whole thing from front to back and left to right. And then tell me that erosion did this. But actually keep it to yourself, okay? Here's something that Rami Barilan shared uh, that he found a couple years back. Right there in the center. Looks like kind of a crankshaft to me. I don't know what it is, but... You can see the uh, uh, rounded portion on the left with a central divot or pivot. Divots in the handle to the right, a shaft going back and connecting to kind of a square assembly with more round stuff <laughs> sticking out of it. Who knows what this stuff is? But, you know, check out Rami's uh, website, ramibarilan.com. It's in the links down below. He has lots of great finds, and he also has some wonderful artwork that he's done. You'll recall that last week we featured a gigantic structure that was found on the moon with the Japanese Selene 
Lunar Orbiter. And one of our sharp-eyed viewers, Fakri Kayat, found another one at the 237 time mark. And you can see it right there in that crater. Now you might remember from the last episode that the Selene Orbiter varies from 12 to 62 miles in its orbit. And uh, so the closest this could be is maybe 12 miles above the lunar terrain. This crater is about five or six miles across. So you see the big cube on the right hand side that is large. That's about a mile across, folks. So let's uh, break it down a little bit, see what we've got. You can see they've tried to blur it out, but there's another cube, almost as big as the first one, just off to the left. And did you notice these towers, spires, if you will, and what might be buildings, all on kind of a rectangular base right in front? And what about this structure here? Now bear in mind, there's no atmosphere on Mars, at least that's what we're told. And so you don't have half-lit objects. It's either full shadow or full sunlight. So that tells me that whatever this is, besides being really large, that it's that gray color and that it's in the sunlight. And there's one more thing, in case you haven't already noticed. See how most of the crater is blurred out, both inside and outside? Our takeaway on this is that if Japan is doing the same obfuscation that NASA is, and that Europe, ESA, the United Arab Emirates, uh, India, Chinese, whoever else is putting rovers and probes up there, are doing the same thing. They're hiding stuff from us. That tells us that whoever's really calling the shots is above national sovereignty and that everybody is towing the line for whatever reason. So just continue to enjoy your status along with me as a free-range slave. Well, thanks for stopping by today and uh, having a look at some of this strangeness that we do here. If you liked what you saw today, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It helps with the search algorithms in YouTube, which are beyond comprehension. If you want to support this work, please consider clicking the Join button down below and uh, selecting your level of involvement. I appreciate it if you can do it, and if you can't, I still appreciate you anyway. For all you proud weirdos out there, you know who you are. Stay safe and stay weird. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>